right. All right, we are live. Thanks everybody for joining us today uh, for today's Gatsby Web Creators. Marcy and Aisha are going to be talking about scripting an interactive UI. And Marcy, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Hey, Marcy, I think we're not getting sound from you. I'm sorry. Okay, let me double check. Not getting sound from me. Yeah, it says you're there. It says I've got audio here. And I can hear you. Oh, boy. How about now? Looking good. You can't uh, put the captures. No, I can hear it. Okay. I'm going to. Uh, no. Um. Let me play with the layout really quick. I think our captioner was uh, captioning rather yes. than saying she can't hear you. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so we're good then. I think so. Um, well, in in the stream, okay. In so you can hear everybody now. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Good, All right. Talking about what okay. we do when it's cruddy outside, when it's raining or hey. Kind of gross. Sorry, it's having issues again. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. But very low volume. Interesting. Okay, let me see. Low volume. Turn your head up. Why is there a noise? Testing. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I think I just need to talk louder. No. <laughs> Yeah, there was some issue with the mixer. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> it's just, what is Thank this, you. take three? <laughs> All right. So let's try this again. Hello, Gatsby Web Creators. Uh, we're here to talk about making interactive user interfaces. I'm joined by Aisha Blake. Um, yeah, we were just talking about what we do when it's rainy and crappy outside. And I was saying that I really like making things, like cooking uh, especially because I get to eat the things on the other end. Um, yeah, so with that, I would really love to move into creating this user interface. We're going to be using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to create something with the tools that you get on the web platform for free. So before we get into things like React and Gatsby, where we use more JavaScript and libraries to do this, we're going to use some of the tools that we get for free in the browser. All right, so um, in terms of APIs, Aisha, do you have any favorite APIs on the web that you've used in projects or things that come to mind? Ooh, there are, there are a lot of really fun ones. Um, I think that my favorite API um, that I've seen some surprisingly creative things done with um, is actually the Pokemon API. You can 
And I say this largely because you can uh, section Pokemon off by generation. So like I can only, pre I can pretend that only the Pokemon that existed when I was a child exist if I nice. use this API. <laughs> that sounds cool. And I think there's an example of the Pokemon API somewhere in the Gatsby docs, um, you know, for Probably. whenever you're getting into Gatsby web development land. Well, I found some really neat ones. I guess I'm gonna have to regenerate my API key after this because it's on the video. Um, but I found this site for NASA APIs where you can pull in images. Um, there's some really neat, uh, like different APIs that you can hit. Um, here's the list. So if I go down to browse APIs, there's one for astronomy picture of the day. It has the popular appeal of a Justin Bieber video, according to NASA. So I think I'm going to go with that. So I figured maybe we could play with NASA APIs. And so an API, again, is an application programming interface. It is a standard, I guess, for each site, they define um, how you should talk to them to get information. So you have to know what code do you put in, what parameters, what options, like what are you trying to request from, from NASA or from whichever API. And so there's a specific way that you have to do that. And they have examples here. So I would make a request. So I go out and hit this API from my code. I go fetch some data from it um, using these query parameters of a date. So NASA's API, they expect a date. I think it started in 1995, maybe. So any date range within from that date to now. Um, I can get high definition images if I want. And I need an API key. To play around with this, there is this demo key. Um, and it takes a, just a few minutes to set up an API key. Um, I have done that, so I'll just probably keep using it. But I am going to regenerate it after this. Because uh, API keys are things that are meant for you. You shouldn't check them into GitHub. Um, you know, They're meant to be just for you. So that uh, really, it's about making sure that people aren't going and hitting these APIs like you know, a bunch, they want to rate limit and make sure that everyone can use the API. So we've got one for NASA images, but there's also the dog image API, which I'm a big fan of. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so there are all of these different, what we call endpoints. And so the endpoint for NASA was to go hit their astro astronomy image of the day. Uh, the, the dog image API, you can list all breeds, you can get a random image. I'm thinking that's the one that we should use. Um, and it will return a random image every time I hit this endpoint with JavaScript. Um, I could go down by breed. I mean, you could, you could make a pretty neat dog image app here. And so when I hit this API, it will return code to me in the form of a, an object here. So this is what we call JSON uh, for JavaScript object notation. So we've seen objects a little bit in previous streams um, denoted by these curly braces. This one has a key of message, so in, in the quotes. And then the value of this message key in this JSON object is an array of images, so or an array of strings pointing to image URLs. So these are all random numbers. I could write some code to iterate over this array and display every one if I wanted to but I want to get one random image and I'm thinking, so dogs have spots, there's spots in space. What if we made an interface kind of like, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of hot or not. I'm not gonna really go too deep into what that was. It was a dating app kind of, I don't know, but we could make one called spot or not where we have a dog image and a space image. And if either one has spots, you can pick one kind of seem like a fun activity to do. And we oh, can yeah. do that. We can do that with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we got a lot to do. So let's get going. Um, back in our, our Glitch project, which I've linked on our uh, Contentful landing page, and um, Caitlin can probably drop that in the chat. Um, there is a completed project. And I'm working off of a Scratch project where I will fill everything in as we build it. But both Glitch projects have some resources, including this video called A Packet's Tale about how the internet works. It's really interesting if you want to learn like 
I type in a URL, where does it, where does that go? You know, how am I getting information back from these requests? There's a documentation link for the fetch API, which is something we're going to use to go and hit these, these APIs. So fetch itself is an API that you get in the web browser. The NASA API and the dog APIs are, those are custom APIs. So anyone can make an API. Um, we're going to use JavaScript modules, which is a way to write our JavaScript to make it a bit more portable. And yeah, I've got a, a couple of links here. So let's get started in our HTML. I have gotten this going a little bit ahead of time to include our script file. And so in the head of my HTML, I've got this script with a source pointing to script.js. And I've added this new thing here called type equals module. And that will tell the web browser that the type of JavaScript we are pulling in is structured as a module. And there's a few little differences, particularly that in this modern JavaScript file, I can write import. And I'm going to do this a little bit ahead of time, but we haven't written this code yet. Um, but if I wanted to pull in a, a, a piece of code to go and get the NASA image, because that needs like a date and let's see what else went into that, the, the date and the API key. The dog image API didn't need either of those. So I need slightly different code to call these two APIs, but they both are going to return images. So there is some similarities there. So I'm going to write my code um, to have these two uh, pieces of code that I can pull in, and then those in turn will call the reusable part. But they are both going to live in a file called modules in a modules directory. And I'm going to make this reference here to API image. Modules API image is empty right now. So we have to add this code. Um, and let's get this hooked up right away. By So to make this a true module, I need to export some code so that that import will actually work. Um, so I'm going to start by creating a class for the API image. And we've seen functions so far. We haven't seen classes yet in our stream. So this is very similar to a function, except it says class instead of function. The export part is for our, our JavaScript module. And we're using only what's available in the web browser. Um, in a lot of professional projects, you might be using a tool like Webpack or some sort of a script bundler that would maybe modify some of your files. We're not using that today just for uh, simplicity reasons, but this export and import actually works in the web browser, which is pretty neat. So the first thing I need in a class is a constructor function. I'm going to pass so that each API image is going to need a URL. So regardless of which API we're hitting, um, I need to know where to put the image in the HTML when I get to that part. Um, so I'm going to put what's called an ID ref for an ID reference, and that will reference something in the HTML. I also am going to make a function called fetch new image, and that is going to take the URL. So I'm going to set up some stuff um, when the code first runs, and then I'm going to call it again. Um, okay, so let's do a few things. I know we need our specific API um, methods that we pulled into our other script file. So I'm going to set those up. And instead of classes, these are going to be functions. So the dog API image is going to take that ID ref. And I'm sort of scaffolding out the, the bones of this. And then we'll fill in the details in a moment. For the NASA version, NASA API image is going to take the same uh, parameter of an ID ref. And inside of here, I'm just going to fill these in. So the, the dog URL for the dog image API, and if the little zoom thing will get out of the way. <laughs> um, so the dog image API has this, for the random image, I need to use this. Uh, it's dog.ceo slash API slash breeds image random and so on. And I've gotten that from this API website. So for a dog image URL, dog URL, I'm going to paste this uh, thing here. And I think I need 
Uh, so there's a few different versions of this URL. I think you can put a like one or a three. You can get a specific number when you return from this API. And I mm -hmm. want one. And I happen to know that this API, if you add the word alt on the end of it, it will return alt text. So for our friends using screen readers, we can have an image come down and some text to go along with it, which is really helpful for our user interface. For, let's finish this. So my, and this is kind of my favorite part about working with like creating JavaScript code is create the interface of how you want it to work like in the end state and then kind of work back from there and fill in the details. So I'm going to return a new API image. So this is calling our, our class, uh, creating a new instance of the API image class. And it's gonna take the dog URL and the ID ref. So when I call a uh, dog API image from my other script, that's where I'm gonna pass in the ID ref. Dog URL I've got right here. Um, for the API key for the NASA version, that's gonna be something. Um, I think I could probably do the demo key to start. It was... Literally demo key, yeah. yeah. Capitals with um, an underscore. So I'm gonna put demo key in there and that way I can swap it out. Like I need to go regenerate my other API key by putting it here in a variable. I can make it a little easier to find. I can even move it around, pass it in, do different things. Um, for the image date, so the NASA API really wanted a date. And I know I need something between specifically uh, June 16th, 1995. So I'm going to write a function to get that in a moment. Um, but for the image date, I... I'm going to write this function right here. So function random date after 1995. <laughs> and I can call it whatever I want. Uh, random date after 1995. I'm going to call that function. And it is going to return a random date. So the start date, is, I'm going to create a new date. And 1995, June 16th. And that is such a magic number, which is what we call just like something pulled out of thin air. Um, and that's because it is a NASA. I just happen to know from doing some research on this that that is when this began. Um, I think their documentation is a little light. Um, I had to go searching around the web to figure out how to use this exactly. Um, and so that's part of working with APIs sometimes is... You might really want to complete a task, like I really want to get these images. How do I do that? Well, I Google it and look around. Hopefully somebody's written about it. In this case, I found that the first image was 1995. So it's our start date. That's a good point about documentation of APIs. And maybe I'm a little biased because I work on the Gatsby documentation. But I really feel like your API is only as good as the documentation of that API. Like even if you're even if you're writing an API that is going to be used internally on your own team, uh, yeah. your coworkers and future future team members need to be able to use that API. And, and future so, you, fu absolutely future you. Uh, and so when you're going and looking for APIs to use for your projects, really think about. Are you going to be able to use this API in the future? Is it, how easy was it for you to get started? Did you have to go searching? Did you have to go Googling outside of that API's website to find out how it works? Yes. So I learned from searching around that I needed this date. So I'm writing this function. So I, I created a new date in JavaScript. Um, and there is a better, if you're really using dates in JavaScript, you might consider using a library called Moment, but I'm keeping it simple. I don't need Moment today, um, but I created this new date to get the right type of information that JavaScript can operate on. I know today I want that date because I want it between then and now. I need to somehow create a date randomly, like pluck one out of like the range of dates um, in between then and now. So I'm creating a new date and passing it as options 
I'm using start.getTime. So date, when you have a date object, you can call these methods on it, like get time. Um, I have another call down here to get full year. So you can format your dates various ways. So I know for NASA, I need Y, 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 Y. So the four, full four year or four digit year dash, the two numbers for the month dash, and then the two numbers for the day. So that gives me some of, some idea of how they expect dates to be formatted. And that is critical here to make it actually return stuff. So I am formatting this with start.getTime. I'm adding a random number, so math.random. Um, I am multiplying that by today.getTime minus start.getTime. And hopefully my parentheses are all good. I think they are. So if once I have that, I have a date that I can operate on. So I can say, go get the full year for all four um, numbers. And I'm using this um, template literal syntax here where I'm going to combine strings for the little dashes and the, the actual numbers that I'm getting back from the date API. I'm just double checking to make sure that my parentheses are good. So I have an opener here. I have one at the end. I think that should be good. That doesn't look right though. Oh, I do need an extra one at the end. There we go. Okay, so I've got this date full year. I need a dash. Um, I'm gonna escape again and do date.getMonth. Um, and put another dash and that, so that's giving me these correct numbers. And then I will do date.getDate. This one was a little tricky. So which date method would get me the two, um, like, because I think get day was only Monday through, like Sunday through Monday or something. It was like literally which day of the week, but I want which day in the month. So that is get date, as I learned. So now I've got this random date and I could probably log it and say console.log image date. Um, and I could, I'm gonna open my little app over here on the side. Doesn't really have anything in it yet, but I can also do control click inspect and look at the developer tools and see what is happening here. Um, I don't think I'm calling anything yet. So I'll leave that for a moment. We've got some shape coming here. Um, I am going to go over to our script and call some of this stuff. So I've imported it, but I'm not actually executing anything yet. Um, so I'm gonna do that by, I think I actually need to build out a bunch of HTML over here too. So kind of backing up. So the script is gonna operate by going and hitting an API and then I need to insert it into some HTML. Um, and the reason that I'm moving over there straight from my script is that if I wanted to say, you know, a space ID for that ID reference, I need an element in my HTML that has an ID of space image. And then I would be able to call NASA API image space ID. Um, and if I wanted to do the same for a dog ID with dog image, that I haven't written that reference in my HTML yet. Um, and I can call dog ID and space ID. So over here in my HTML, I'm pulling in that script, but I need to build out a little HTML structure. Um, and we're using native HTML here as opposed to React or some other templating language. It is really important to know what you're creating if you're using a library, like what HTML is that going to output to? And there is a lot that you get for free in the web browser. So we're going to use some of it today, starting with a form. Because I want this two up design to be interactive. And sure, I could use a boatload of JavaScript to make that totally custom. But I figured, what if I could leverage forms? Because I want, I think, radio buttons you know, to have exclusive only one choice. Those work with the keyboard for free. Uh, I can like refresh just by letting the form like resubmit. So a lot of times in JavaScript, you want to prevent a form from resubmitting um, on the what we call the client side. 
but we aren't really doing anything with the server. We're not submitting this information anywhere. Um, I'm still going to use a form. So I am going to write a little class here called two up on a div. And that will give me um, the ability to style two things side by side. And I actually have a bunch of CSS written already for time purposes. Think of this like a, a cooking show where I pull out a pie that's already done. <laughs> um, so this is our, our half made pie coming out of the oven here. So I've got a class called two up and it's got a display of grid and two columns side by side with a gap, uh, a grid gap of one M in between. And we've and also got a video on using CSS grid that you can find on our YouTube channel. Exactly. Yeah. Aisha led a really great session on CSS layout, um, which was awesome because we are already familiar with that. So I'm going to create two field sets and I can see it's already populating something on the screen because my CSS exists. So I'm going to create the field set for dogs and one for space. Um, and inside of these, I need a legend. And this is the sort of cue to the, the person using this interface, which, which like item in this form am I selecting? So in, in no matter what image I've pulled back, the question is, is the, does the dog have spots? So I added a field set legend of spotted dog. <laughs> is it? And then on the other one for space, I could say spot and space. Like I'm posing this question to you. Um, and we've got these two form uh, field sets next to each other. So then inside of here to make this interactive, I'm gonna add a label and a radio input. So input type radio, it needs an ID. Um, I'm gonna call it input dog. I'm gonna give it a name of spot or not. <laughs> and so that gives me this radio button that I can check. And I'm going to do the same for the space version so that we have these two interactive items. So input space and input dog. And so by giving them an ID and a name, they have a unique identifier, but they also, the name being the same spot or not is what creates the group so that I can choose only one of these. That's the idea of the radio button. Like, on a radio, you would toggle, you know? Um, so we've got those. The only other thing I would add is a button, button type submit. I could say choose, make your choice. Um, I think we're pretty good here on the HTML. So we've got the structure. Uh, we aren't yet seeing images, obviously, because we haven't done our fetching to the API, but we've got a pretty good set up here, like we're primed. I think we can go back to our JavaScript now. And then the ID ref that I was going to pass in. Oh, I need one more thing actually to make this work. I haven't added the region that I want to populate these images into yet. Um, I'm going to put it inside the label and I'm going to put a div ID of dog image like we had in our script. And I'm going to give it a CSS class of crop height. So these images are all different sizes. Sometimes they're vertical um, or portrait format. And so they're really long. I added some CSS to crop them so that they don't just take over the world. And I'm going to copy this and make another version. It needs to go in the label. And that will be space image. So we have our two ID references now. If I go back to our JavaScript, now this code, if I inspect, there's our date. It only has the two, the single digit for the month. So I might need to play with that a bit. We'll see if that works. I think it'll work the way it is. Um, but this means that our JavaScript module is hooked up and working because this log happened and our date random date after 1995 function is working because it, it logged it. So I think we're ready to go and add some more code to our API image. Um, we have this sort of structure of this, um, but we need to go fill in the details. OK. 
Okay. And if there are any questions in the chat, uh, let us know. Okay, so the last thing we did over here in our API image module was to go and get a random date. I'm not doing anything with it yet. So I'm going to do, I need a URL, kind of like we had our, do our dog URL. We need a space URL. And this one is, so the, the dog one didn't take any parameters. So I just used a string for that um, in the single quotes. We've seen these template literals, which have the back ticks. Um, and you can combine strings and code together really nicely. Um, the alternative uh, I'll show a little bit later um, is to use strings, but you can do what's called concatenation, where you use plus signs. You can combine variables and strings together. Um, I'm going to use a template literal. And I need the URL from the NASA API. So I'm going to copy this for the example query. I'm going to paste it. So the API key, I'm, this is where I'm going to escape and put in API key as a variable here. Um, and that I could change out to be, you know, whatever API key I had generated. I'm going to use the demo key to start. And then I'm going to return a new instance of the API image class. I'm going to pass in the space URL and the ID ref. So those are being called but API image is empty at this point. Um, and so this is where we start getting into our real good parts of fetching something from the API. So when this first gets called, um, I am going to, I need to go reference some of our, um, well, we've got the, the ID ref. So that's what part of our HTML we're gonna hook into. We need to define what are we gonna insert? So I know I need probably an image tag maybe a little more. I'm thinking I could wrap it in a, a figure element. I think we've seen those before. I like figure because uh, it marks the image as like I could style it a little bit more. So I'm going to create, this is an instance of a class, so it will have properties um, like a, I'm going to create a figure property that will reference in our document. I'm going to create a new element of figure. So I've created some HTML declaratively in my HTML file, but I can use JavaScript to generate HTML as well. So this figure and this.fig caption, I'm creating with JavaScript because until I fetch an image from the API, that markup wouldn't really be useful. So if there's stuff that's dynamically generated um, and I'm creating these specific HTML elements, um, which then I can style with CSS. So I'm gonna create an image document dot create element image. I'm going to append. So this dot figure dot append child. Get my typo out of here. Um, so I have to, I create this element, but I have to attach it. So it has to, I, I have to tell HTML like, oh, this goes here. So I'm going to append the, the fig caption to the figure. Because uh, fig caption should be a child of the figure element, and I want it to come first. So before I append this dot image, so that way I've got both of these being attached, and then I need to go and attach the figure itself. So this is where the ID ref comes in handy. And I could do, so I was saying earlier that I could do string concatenation instead of the template literal. And here's what that looks like. It's a hash for the CSS selector for an ID plus the, the variable ID ref. Um, this would be synonymous with the other form that we've seen, which you use a dollar sign and the curly braces to escape. And so those are the same. They will, they will uh, combine to create the hash with the string for the ID ref of space image or dog image, whichever one's being called. Um, I so don't I'm, know if you saw this, but we did actually get a question. On, uh, why do we have to use template literals? Can you please explain? And the answer is we don't. Uh, yeah. But uh, I at least find that it uh, makes writing out these strings that have those dynamic elements a little easier to read and write. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and I'll show you why, actually. Um, down here in our space URL, I haven't passed the date in yet. So we have one parameter here for API key. And this is where the NASA API docs are a little confusing because they don't show you how to pass the date in. Um, but you need a date. So I'm going to say and. So I have these parameters on a URL starts with, so this is the base, um, api.nasa.gov slash planetary slash apod for astronomy. I thought, well, it's not photo an image of the, of the day. day. <laughs> yeah, photo of the day. I'm like, image of the day. <laughs> um, and then you start these options with a question mark. And so then this first one is api underscore key equals it will swap in the string for demo key. I can add multiple variables by doing an ampersand. Um, and then date is the other thing it's, it's expecting. And I'm going to escape the string again to say image date. So this is where template literals are really useful because I have multiple variables that I'm sort of slotting into this longer string. Um, the date was another example where without doing it this way, it would be a lot more like string plus variable plus like you, you combine them all and you can do that. It works great. It's really all about personal preference. Um, and this, this ID ref one, it's short. I mean, either way would work. So I'm appending some code here, but I'm still not fetching an image. So let's do that part. So I'm going to use an API called fetch, which comes for free in the browser. I would need to check browser support. But in general, I'm using a lot of modern APIs and tools here. Um, sort of a caveat that if you were supporting older web browsers, more obscure um, environments, you, you want to test and make sure that things aren't just totally falling down. Um, but fetch is pretty standard. I don't need to use a library. So what I type here is I'm going to call fetch, pass it the URL. So that'll be either this dog URL or the space URL. And then it will return what's called a promise with a response. So response what is what is going to come back from API. And I'm going to handle that response and turn it into JSON. Um, so making sure that the JavaScript format of code that's being returned to me is in the JSON format. And we've seen that uh, here over on the dog API. So this is what we're expecting. Um, it, it basically gets us into the right space to operate on the code that we're getting back. So when that process is done, I'm going to return another promise. And in that, I can take the data that's in JSON format now. And I'm using these um, what's called arrow functions, fat arrow functions. So this is a, a way to write your JavaScript functions to encapsulate the scope in here. Um, there's another way that I could write this would be function data. And instead of the uh, how I had this like equal sign and the right angle bracket um, and no function keyword and no curly braces even. The curly braces are optional in this one liner. Um, fat arrow functions do basically the same thing, except they modify the local scope. So what objects, um, like up here, we even have one here for this. This in API image and this constructor is referring to this instance of the class. Um, and a lot of event handlers um, and different various functions, that's whatever this refers to can change. And like it can be a big can of worms when you're first learning JavaScript. So fat arrow functions sort of make that less of a, a can of worms. Um, I'm going to stick with my arrow functions. But just that's a quick kind of, if you're curious, like what's the difference um, between regular functions and fat arrow functions, it's really the scope. Um, okay, so I've got this data. Now I can do things with it. Um, and I've got, I'm calling this two times. So there's the dog version and the NASA version. Um, and I know I'm going to need to pluck a URL off of the response data that I've gotten. So for, well, first of all, let's, let's start by logging. What is on this data object? Because I've gotten it, but I don't really know what's on it. <laughs> so I can't really write code yet. Um, so I'm going to go over here, inspect again, 
go over to the console and see, I think I need to call fetching a new image. Hasn't done this yet. So in the constructor, I'm gonna say this.fetch new image. I'm gonna pass the URL that I was getting. Haha. -ha. And now we have fetched two times because we have called both of these um, API methods that I wrote or API functions. So the dog version gives me a, the JSON object that we saw on the dog API docs that gives me a message with an array and it has one item in it of a URL and the alt text that I requested of a Bernese mountain dog. I like where this is going. And then on the space version, I've gotten an image from 2015, uh, July 26. Why does the Sombrero galaxy look like a hat? I'm dying to know. So I've got these URLs. If I copy one of these, I can paste it into my browser and look at the image directly. And they're probably pretty big. Oh, this is a, a high-definition version, maybe. Um, those stars look awfully spotty. <laughs> Compared to a Bernese mountain dog, I think this one might win. But it'll, you know, it'll depend what random images we get when we hit the API. So that part's working. I need to display this now. So. I know I've got from the dog image API, I've got the, so the image URL came from data.message that came in with an array. So I'm gonna arrays, each item has an index starting from zero. There's only one item. So it's the item in the zeroth place. <laughs> uh, and it's the URL is the image URL. For the space version, um, let me go back and open that up again and comment this out so that glitch will run it again. So the space image, I want URL. So it's not in this message um, array. I'm going to just say data.url. So depending on which one that's been called, like if it's this, if this exists, use like if data.message exists, use this. Otherwise, try data.url. There might be a more graceful way that you could write all of this, but this is what I went with. So I also want to get the image text. So image text, I'm going to go get data.message.0 alt text. So go and pull out that property. And then on the space version, if that message array doesn't exist, I think data.title can see down here on the so there's explanation, which is really long on the NASA API, but there's this short version called Moonshadow, uh, which it, for what we're getting back from the dog API, those were a little more similar in length to compare. I mean, we're comparing two images, so I'm gonna use title. And then I need to append this in an image. So I'm gonna say this.image.set attribute um, the image has a source attribute, and that is where I will put image URL. And I could say this dot image dot, uh, I need to set the attribute for the alt text as well. So image text, um, or actually, I'm going to leave alt empty because I want to display the text, and this is going inside of a figure element. So this dot fig caption, which we've already appended, I'm gonna give that some text content of image text. So that is getting displayed. And would you look at that? We've got images. The space one sometimes is a little slow. So I just tell it to try again, unless something is broken maybe. Um, we could check. I'm gonna open this in a new window go and check my console, see what is happening. I am not getting space images. So to debug this, I usually will go and inspect the HTML. So I've got this, the figures getting in there. So that part's working. Oh, here. So it's not done. Um, so it could be something wrong with how I'm referencing the data from the space API. Um, so that's a good clue for me to go and debug this. 
Um, so data.title, I could, I could console log these. So image URL, image text, go and see what's going on with those. It might be an issue. I mean, the request was coming back. So we've got data from the API. It's just not being displayed. So there's the dog version. I don't think this is working yet. So it's probably something with my templating here. Yeah. I'm looking at the um, image URL. Um, should we be checking data.message first? Oh, possibly. Yeah, you know, I did re I did reverse the order of these from my um, initial work on this. So yeah, it might be failing um, because data.message doesn't exist. Data.title. And the these pipe characters, by the way, that I'm doing is an or, uh, a logical or. So I'm saying data.url or data.message uh, zero dot URL. Uh, and if it doesn't exist, then we should be, then we should have been going to data.url, but. Yeah, that is peculiar. Um, what is going on? Oh, what might have happened is that I'm using the demo key. Ah. And the space API might be mad at me because I've been making a lot of requests. <laughs> um, because I'm not actually getting this response back. So I might be getting, oh yeah, here, error. Oh, there yeah. You go. <laughs> Sorry, as I yell into the mic, the <laughs> over rate limit. All right, well, I am going to, I'm gonna, you know, really go for it here and generate my, my API key. I think I cleared out of here. I'm gonna cheat and go and get it from our final project. I'm gonna go reset this API key after this is over. Um, it is in our API module. I'm gonna go and copy this. Nobody spam me. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got this. Yeah, that was it. So I was getting rate limited, which is a good lesson to learn when you're working with APIs. Um, so I've got these images loaded now. Uh, it's the Basenji dog versus Apollo 17's uh, lunar rover. And I've got somewhat of an interactive interface here. Um, if I hit enter, it refreshes it. So it sort of works. I mean, it is interactive. It is pulling down our images. Um, what I would love to do is when you pick one and you hit the enter key, have the uh, browser give you an alert with which one you picked and then refresh it. So I need to go into my other script file and add a little bit of interactive handling with JavaScript. So I've used HTML to its really awesome potential. Um, I'm gonna go enhance it with some interactivity. Um, so a couple things I need to do. Um, I need to at least go and prevent the form from submitting before I can do something with it. So I'm gonna go and create a variable for the form and the document object has a thing on forms. So if there are any HTML forms, they will be returned from an array from document.forms. And I only have one, so it's in the, uh, the first position or the zeroth position. Um, so I've got a reference for our form. And I want to create a, an event listener um, that prevents this, like I need to, um, I need to handle it, let me see, handle the submit function. So we'll, we'll do that first in case we run out of time. So I will say form.add event listener. I'm gonna say submit, because the form is always gonna fire that submit whenever I uh, either click the choose button or if I hit the enter key um, inside of our form. I'm gonna create an ev uh, event object pass through. Um, so inside of this event handler, to get it to prevent from uh, submitting, I'm going to say event.preventDefault and call that function. Um, so now if I go over here and I hit the enter key, nothing happens, which is what I wanted because 
I want to pass in, um, or I'm going to, I'm going to call a window dot alert and I'm just going to say the winner is, and I'm not going to be passing the text in quite yet. Um, but let's say I could say const alert text. I'll just put you for now. The winner is you. And that will fire an alert when I submit this. Voila, the winner. We don't really have a winner yet. Um, but when I submit this, depending on which item I have selected, um, it should alert one. And then if I did want to submit the form after that, after I've done my stuff, I could say form.submit. And then when I've hit the enter key, it will pop up that alert. Then it will refresh it. Um, and I'm not doing any like server backend stuff to like go post to a server or anything, um, but I am playing with interactivity and native HTML and JavaScript. So what I would love to do is pass in, uh, there's a couple things. I would love to get the text from the selected item. Um, I'd like to do a little bit of ergonomics with arrow keys. So like if I was anywhere on this page and I hit left or right, I would love for it to select. Right now I have to tab into the radio button and then I can use the arrow keys. So I could make that a little like more of a game kind of environment. Um, I also would love to use some JavaScript to change the, uh, like when I choose one, I see the radio button being checked. I would love to apply some CSS. Um, and I really, I need JavaScript to get up the HTML tree. So I can use CSS for the checked radio button and maybe a sibling, but if I want to style the wrapper element when it's checked, I need a little bit of JavaScript. Um, so our completed example goes into all of that. I think in our last few minutes, let's see, let's see if I can pull off getting um, the text. I believe in you, Marcy. Believe in me, I might run over. Um, I'm just gonna make sure. Oh, actually, I can do this pretty easily um, because I'm, I can already use, um, oh, no, I was going to set a checked class. You, so what you can get from CSS, and I have an example of this in our CSS, um, or do I? So if I have an input, um, here's one here for the input type radio, uh, where I'm scaling it to be bigger. Um, I also have some CSS in here for the focus state that I was gonna replace um, with uh, this checked class. Um, if I wanted to, I could say checked. So the checked on the input itself. Um, so I could do this where now if it's checked, it will scale it up. Um, so I've got some handles in CSS, but to get styling kind of up the tree, I need a little bit more JavaScript. So it's 1058. Should I barrel through the rest? I think we started a few minutes late, so maybe we could. Let me know what you think. I'll just yeah, keep typing. I think, yeah, we can go over a, a little bit if, if people can stick around, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna get a collection of the, the two field sets by doing document.query selector all. So far today, we've seen query selector for the single one. I wanna get all of them. So I'm going to say field set. Um, I'm going to get the radios with document dot query selector all that will return a node list of the input. Here's some cool syntax, um, and this is CSS as well. We just saw this in our style .css file, but I could say input square brackets type equals quote radio, and this will be a this is a CSS selector here for an input type of radio. There's also input type of text, uh, password, date. I mean, there's a bunch of different inputs, so it is good to specify or use CSS classes or IDs. Um, so I've got this radios collection. I need to iterate over those. Um, so if I'm gonna do anything like when they change, um, let's do, Let's iterate over these radios. So I'm gonna use a for loop here. I'm gonna say for let index equals zero. So starting at the zeroth position, <laughs> I keep saying zeroth, I love it. 
Um, index is less than radios.length. So I'm going to iterate over the length of the radios node list. And then I'm going to increment index each time I go through. So this allows me to dynamically step over these radios. And I can say radios, when whichever item we're on, as we dynamically go through these, I can say add event listener. And radios give this native change event. Whenever that selection is made, it will fire this function. And so I'm binding it for each radio button. And in our event handler, I'm going to say, I'm going to call some code that I'm about to write. Uh, no. Glitch is telling me it's having problems. Now my internet's telling me it's having problems. <laughs> I guess we'll yeah. hopefully, hopefully, I don't know what's happening. Glitch is having, ish having glitches. So I'm going to write a function here called set current field set. Stop it. <laughs> it's just giving me grief here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm going to refresh the page. Maybe that'll help. It's having issues. Set current field set. I'm going to pass in the index. I'm going to write this function. Uh, function set current field set. I'm going to pass in the index that I'm going to get from this for loop. Um, and I'm actually going to call this checked index. So I need to check which one's current. If I'm going to reset these to change the CSS kind of up the tree, um, I need to know which one's checked already. So um, I could say field sets. And I'm going to create an array from these using our array.from method. So there's two different ways. Um, the rate, or well, there's at least two different ways, probably more. Uh, radios, I'm using a node list. So I can use a for loop there. If I want to do something like field sets dot for each, um, I need to actually have an array and not a node list. So I created one using array.from. So for each field set, I'm, and I can get an index. I love this for each uh, function. I could say if index is not equal to checked index. So if when I iterate over these, it's not currently checked, um, I could say field set dot class list dot remove uh, checked. I think this is lowercase. Um, so that's going to say, you know, when I iterate over these, if um, if it's not checked, when I the one I passed in, then remove it. Um, and then for the for the one that we do want to check. Um, the parent of our radio button, I'm going to say checked index field sets in the position of the checked one that's getting passed in. Um, I could say class list dot add checked. Um, so I'm calling this when I iterate so that the, ch the change function is what's actually passing in which item got checked. So I am leveraging um, the native browser stuff. So if I do console.log, let's say index, uh, or I could say radios index. Let's see which item is getting, so this will only fire once. Um, so I could do this. There's the radio. Our change function is working uh, sort of dynamically. Um, I have two radios, but if I had 10, that's where doing this dynamically really uh, starts to matter a lot more. Um, so I've got that part, my CSS class. I is not do think the L is capitalized. Okay. Haha, -ha. that is right. All right, so we've got our highlighting now. Our CSS is matching, so it's really obvious which one you have selected. Um, I think the, the last thing I would like to do is go and get our alert text so that when you fire that alert, that it will say the winner is for whichever one was selected. Um, so I could say document.query selector. I'm going to go get that checked class now and go and get the fig captions text. So I've got alert text. Here, I'll do some string concatenation here instead of an, a template literal. So now, I need to look at these images and see. I think the 
this galaxy one. I mean, the stars yeah, are more spotted. Like... And a bit of sort of knowledge here. The reason I wrapped all of this in a label and made it a form is because I got this interactivity for free. Like my mouse cursor over this entire region, over the image and everything, I get that automatically because I used forms. It's awesome. Um, so now if I do this, the, oh no, but the Saluki isn't the winner. Dang it, I picked wrong. <laughs> but we've got it working. But it works. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what is this? The zoom windows over this. Tomorrow's picture of the South Pole Aitken Basin. This looks a little more spotted than the, I, the Akita. So true winner is tomorrow's picture. Um, all right so yeah we went five minutes over um uh, but we've got an interactive spot or not interface um i don't know what this gentleman with the egging on the autumnal equinox is uh i'm gonna go for the weimariner because its eyes are spotty <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you've got any other questions, um, let us know. We've got a mailing list, um, so we can always answer you over email. Um, next week, Aisha is going to be leading us uh, through a Node.js adventure. So yeah, next week, uh, we're going to keep building our web skills to build on this as we move up to things like React and Gatsby. Um, so thanks so much for joining us. Yep. Hope you had fun playing with Spot or Not and JavaScript APIs. Absolutely. And thank you to Caitlin and Rebecca, our captioner. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Uh, stay tuned for future streams. Thank you all for joining us and have a great weekend. Thanks so much.